So products like the real-time database and Cloud Firestore are great for storing application data, but they're really only designed for documents that are less than like one meg total. What do you do if you need to store very large chunks of data, things like images, video, or sound files? Well, for that, you're going to want to use Cloud Storage for Firebase. Let's find out how in this episode of Firecast. So this here is my simple iOS app where I'm going to let people make their own memes by adding text on top of an image. Ha! <laughs> That's hilarious. Now, underneath my text field, you can see I've got a button and a hidden progress view. The idea is that when a user clicks the Upload button, they'll be able to save the image they've created to cloud storage, and then we can report back the uploaded progress to our progress view. Later on, we'll find a way to download that image so it can be shared for maximum humor impact. So I've already got the part of my app working where I've added some text to my image and I've put the finished image into a UI image view. What I need to do now is figure out what to do when our user clicks the Upload button. Now, if you want to follow along with this video, you don't need to do all this fancy me making logic. Just go ahead and create a simple application with like a UI image view, a progress bar, and a button. As long as you've got an image pre-populated in this image view to work with, you should be fine. Now, the next thing I've already done with my project is gotten Firebase up and running. I've created a project in the console, attached my iOS application to the project, downloaded some constants through the plist file, installed the Firebase library using CocoaPods, and called firebase.configure in my app delegate. Don't know what I'm talking about? Watch this wonderful setup video first, then come on back. So in general, there are three steps for uploading data to Firebase Storage. First up is creating a storage reference. You can basically think of this as a URL where you're pointing to the data's final destination in Firebase Storage. Second, we'll start uploading the file to this reference through a storage task object that we create. Finally, we'll update the progress bar, which we'll do by observing when the storage task object receives a progress event. So let's start by creating a storage reference. In Cloud Storage for Firebase, references are basically like URLs, except that beginning with HTTP and pointing to a web page, they start with GS and point to a specific location in Google Cloud Storage. A typical reference looks a little something like this. The first part here, you can kind of think of it as the host, is generally something the Firebase library will look up for you. As for the rest of the reference, you can think of this as a path to the file's location, and you get to define that as the developer. All right, let's get coding. So first off, let me make sure I add Firebase slash storage to my pod file so I have all the libraries I need. I'll call pod install, do, 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 and I am good to go. All right, let me go ahead and open up my XC workspace. Next, I'm going to jump into my view controller and import Firebase at the top here. Then I'll go down to my upload button was tapped handler. In there, I'll create the storage reference. Now I can do that by first calling storage.storage.reference and this will get me that storage host I was talking about earlier. After that, I can call something like childmemes.childsamplepick.jpg to create the rest of my path. And while that works, it is a bit wordy, so I often like to shorten this to reference with path memes slash samplepick.jpg, which does the same thing. It just looks a little cleaner. Now, the problem here is that this hard-coded path is going to point to the same location every time, and I want my users to be able to upload lots of different images. So instead, let's create a little random string here using UUID, and then we'll use that as the name of our file. Now we can upload multiple images without overwriting any of the others. OK, next up, we're going to convert our UI image into a data object. There's a bunch of ways of doing this, but I'm going to say let image data equal image view dot image dot JPEG data with a compression quality of, say, 0.75. This will convert our image view into a data stream of a JPEG type. And since this returns an optional, we'll add a guard let here and else return. OK. Next up, I'm going to create a little metadata so I can specify the content type as a JPEG. This step is kind of optional, but it can be useful, as you'll see later. So we'll create a metadata object. And then we can set our content type like this. And now I'm going to start uploading the file. Now I can do that with the put data metadata completion handler method. Add in my data and my upload metadata objects here and here. And then in my completion handler, I get back a new metadata object that tells me a little about the image that just got uploaded, along with an error object in case there was any trouble. So uh, let's add some simple error checking here. If let error equal error print, oh no, got an error, and you know we'll return. And if everything looks good, let's print out this other metadata object. It's got some interesting values that are worth checking out. All right, let's give this a try. So I'm going to run it, and we will upload my photo. And uh, huh, 
Well, looks like I'm running into an unknown error. Now, this is because cloud storage for Firebase hasn't yet been enabled for my project, so uh, we better fix that. I'm going to head back over to the Firebase console and click Storage here on the left, and then I'm going to click Get Started. Now, you'll see here, this is giving me a little dialog telling me that by default, it's setting some security rules where anybody who signed in through Firebase Auth can read or write to any folder in this bucket. I'll click Got It to start off with these rules, and I am ready to go. Now, the one problem I have with these default rules is that my little sample app doesn't have any authentication added to it yet. So for the purpose of this video, let's make these even more open. Now, I'm going to click the Rules tab and change these rules to say that anybody can read or write to anywhere in this bucket. Now, this is a pretty bad idea, and you should never actually do this in real life, but it does make this screencast easier. OK, now I think I should have everything I need to upload an image. Let's give it a try. I'll hit the Upload button. And I can see that a few seconds later, I get back the download metadata indicating that my object was successfully uploaded. If I dig into this metadata, I can see the name of the bucket where this file is being put, as well as the file name representing the folder and name of this file. And I can confirm this by going back to the storage section of the Firebase console. Let me click on the Files tab. Here's my folder for memes. I'll click on that. And inside here, oh, look at that. There's the picture I just uploaded. Note that because I specified my content type as a JPEG image in the metadata, Firebase knows it's an image, so I can see a preview of my image right here in the console. Nice. So this is all well and good, but I also want to be able to monitor our progress as this image gets uploaded so I can fill up that progress bar. Let's do that next. Now, this put data call returns a storage upload task object, which is an object that represents my upload operation. Now, I can call a number of methods on this object if I wanted to directly affect this task, like I could cancel or pause my upload manually if I wanted. But I can also observe a number of different events that might occur on this task as well. I can observe, for instance, when the upload is paused or resumed, or if it fails and why. And that can all be really useful, but for now, I'm just going to observe any progress events that this task fires off, which will tell me how much of the file we've uploaded so far. So the first thing I'm going to do is capture the return value of this put data call into a value that I'm going to call, let's call it task reference. OK, then I'm going to call task reference.observe.progress. Now, this will get triggered when the upload task uploads a chunk of data to cloud storage for Firebase. Inside the handler here, I get a task snapshot object, which tells me about the current state of the upload. Now, this object, in turn, contains an optional progress object, which has this very useful fraction completed property. So I'll grab the value of this property, and I guess I'll just return if it doesn't exist. Then we'll do a little print debugging, my favorite kind, and set the value of my progress view to this fraction completed value. And just like that, I'm reporting progress to my progress view. Oh, and uh, since this is happening within an asynchronous handler, we better make self weak. There. All right, that's better. Oh, and in case you're wondering, I don't actually need to worry about removing this observer when I'm done with it. Upload task objects automatically remove all observers on themselves when they're done. One less thing for me to worry about. Oh, last thing I should probably do is make sure I unhide the progress bar when we start uploading this image. All right, better. OK, let's give this another try. I'm going to upload my image, and there we go. My bar is filled up. Uh, note that it went pretty quickly because I'm on a pretty fast network, but on a slower network, you'll probably appreciate this meter a little more. Oh, one last thing. On fast network connections, you often won't get that last progress event with a value of 1 before the upload is complete. So in a real app, I would probably make sure to set the progress bars completely full in my put data completion handler, too. OK, now that our images have been stored, let's work on the other important part of the process, which is downloading them again later. Now, there are a couple ways to retrieve these images from cloud storage. One way is to use some of the methods supplied by the Cloud Storage for Firebase SDK to retrieve this data. Another way is to get a download URL that you can later use to retrieve this data through traditional HTTP requests. So I will walk you through both ways of doing things. So first, I'm going to add a simple fetch image button, and I'll create a handler for that. Now, retrieving data using cloud storage is similar to storing data. You're going to start with a reference to a Google Cloud Storage location, but make a get data call instead of a put data call. So first, let's get the reference to our image. I'm going to do that like before by calling storage.storage.referencewithpath. Since these file names were randomly generated and I'm not saving them anywhere else right now, I'm just going to copy and paste the one I need into this path directly. Next, I'm going to call storageref.getData. Now, this takes two arguments, a maximum size and a completion handler. 
The max size is there to make sure I don't end up retrieving a file that's too big. Remember, this thing gets loaded into memory, and if it ends up being more than my phone can handle, your app might have some trouble. In my case, I think it's safe to assume that my data object won't be any larger than 4 meg, particularly once my images have been converted to JPEGs, so I can set my max size to 4 times 1024 times 1024. And then in the completion handler, we can have our data as a big old optional data blob and an error object. So first, let's do some basic error checking. If let error equal error, blah, blah, blah. And then we can check and see. If we have data, let's set our image view equal to the contents of that data. And we'll make that a weak self, of course. And now you can see that when I run this app and I click the button, my image now appears on screen. Hooray! And just like my put data call, this call will also return a task reference, which I could observe to report progress or use to manually pause my download if I wanted to. And while all this is nice and can be a really easy way to fetch data within the app, your user might want to share this picture with their friends directly outside of the app. And for that, we'll probably need a URL. Now, requesting a URL for a particular file from Google Cloud Storage is a network call. So you're going to need to call the download URL method on the Cloud Storage reference and then get the actual URL in the completion handler. You know, you really could do this anytime after the file's been uploaded, but for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to do it right in my put data completion handler. So let me jump back to my upload image method. And since I already have a reference to the uploaded image right here, I'm just going to call download URL on it. And then in the completion handler, we'll do some error checking. If let error equal error, show some information. Otherwise, if let URL equal URL, print that out. So now if we upload another image, you'll see that it gives me back this giant URL that I can use later on to fetch this image or share it with friends. You might also see that at the end here, I have a token. Now, this token gives any HTTP request permission to read this image from cloud storage, regardless of the security rules that I have set up there. Obviously, generating the URL with this token only works if the user running the app is able to access the file in the first place. And as a developer, you do have the power to revoke these tokens later if you need to. So I can go ahead and copy and paste this URL into a browser. And voila, there's my lovely image that I can share with my friends. The other nice thing about having your image as a URL is that you can use a number of different third-party libraries to manage loading your images for you. Libraries like SD Web Image, Alamo Fire Image, and Kingfisher will let you load images, cache them locally, and display placeholder images if you give them a URL. For instance, if I were using the Kingfisher library, I would swap out my old fetch code with these few lines. And I get disk caching and a loading indicator and a placeholder image and a fun transition when this image is fully loaded. Up to you if you want to go this route. It does mean an extra network call to get those URLs in the first place, but look at that fancy transition, huh? No way that's ever going to get old. Now, two other things I should probably talk about here. First is that not all the content you want to store in cloud storage will be images. Sometimes you're going to want to load up even larger binary objects, like movies, which would be impossible to store in memory. Luckily, cloud storage has ways to handle this. In addition to our put data and get data calls, we have put file and write to file methods that will fetch and store a larger file to disk instead of an NS data object. For instance, here's some code that I would use to upload a movie to cloud storage. Note that the only real differences here are that I've got video slash QuickTime in my metadata, and I'm pointing to the local URL of a file instead of an NS data object. Otherwise, everything else is pretty similar. And once again, I have a task reference that I could use to update my progress bar. And retrieving the file and storing it locally would look something like this. Again, the call looks pretty similar to what I had for images. I'm just now calling write to file instead of keeping the downloaded object in memory. Honestly, the hardest part of this is remembering the code to find a local file to save this data. I, I always got to look that up. Second thing I should probably mention is that now would be a great time to reset your security rules to something more secure. At the very least, consider bringing them back to your default setting where a user needs to be signed into your app in order to save or load data. But there is more you could do with security rules. You could, for instance, set a maximum file size for any item a user tries to upload, or have different settings for your movies path versus your memes path. Or you could set up individual user folders and only let a user upload a file to a folder that belongs to them. All these are options you might want to consider. So there you go, everything you need to get started with cloud storage for Firebase. Now, if you want to know more, feel free to check out our documentation. But before you do, I have three tasks for you. One, revert back those storage rules, like now, while you're still thinking about it.
Two, think about what parts of your app might work well for cloud storage. Like, do you have any cool screenshots or game replays your users might want to share with their friends? Well, this is the perfect solution for that kind of feature. And three, hey, why not subscribe to our YouTube channel? We got lots of great tutorials like this one and more on the way. So go on, subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. <laughs>